Hi and welcome to today's video. If you're new here, my name is Leah and I am a mum of two boys. My oldest is two and called Tommy and my youngest is four months and called Fraser. As you can tell from the title of this video, these are my 0 to three months essential items for a baby. And since Fraser is now four months, I thought it was about time that I made this video. Obviously there are a lot of things that you do need for a baby and I'm not going into the, the normal things you might need like feeding, clothes, those kind of things because obviously everyone needs those things. A lot of these items you could possibly do without but these are things that we've been using pretty much on a daily basis since he was born so I thought I would share those with you because it just makes life a little bit easier um, because having a newborn is hard work and particularly when you've got an older child or two older children it just makes life easier if you do have some of these items so if you're interested in seeing what items we've been using for the first three months of Fraser's life then keep watching so the first item are muslins um, these are just two that I have we have tons of these and we get through a lot I'm sure I get through a lot more this time around than I did with my eldest maybe this baby is a little bit more sicky than our oldest was I think it possibly is but we get through these every single day, um, sometimes two, three, or even more. Um, and they're just really, really useful. I pop one on my shoulder when I'm cradling him, because, well, particularly now, because he's a little bit older, he slobbers everywhere because he's starting to tease, I think. Um, so it just keeps my shoulder dry, but also protects you from sick, because baby sick does smell, particularly if they are formula fed, which our boy is. Um, they. So they wipe up sick, they are great if you're winding them, if they have a bit of a snotty nose, anything. It just mops everything up and keeps you dry, hopefully. And I also use them in his crib, so I pop it on the sheet, on top of the sheet, so that if he's sick overnight, all I need to do is replace this rather than the whole sheet. And then if I need to replace the sheet the next day, I can deal with that then rather than dealing with it in the middle of the night. So that's been really good. So I usually pop one of these under him in his crib as well as other places. So when he's resting during the day, on the floor, um, different things like that, they are really useful just for keeping sick at bay because if they are, there's no warning to this and they'll just sick up some, um, some milk and then it's in your carpet or it's on their sheets or and just different things like that. It's so much easier to change one of these than it is to start cleaning carpets. The next item is also a muslin, but it's a large muslin. So this is one that I have. It's, as you can see, it's really big. That's doubled over. Um, it's like two or three times the size of a regular muslin cloth. Um, I got this one from TK Maxx as well as another one. As you can see, it has kind of like a leaf design on it. I really like it. Um, I didn't know what I was having, whether I was having a boy or a girl with my oldest and I bought this before he was born and I quite liked the fact that it was really neutral um, and not gender specific at all. And so we're using these with Fraser as well and we use these, obviously you can use them for winding but particularly we use these for wrapping him, uh, swaddling him while he's a newborn and um, they are really good because they are breathable, they're not too thick. Our, both our boys were born in December, so we did add blankets on top that were tucked in, but it meant that they didn't overheat with what was wrapped around them because they can really, really easily overheat. So I did like the fact that these are thin and breathable um, and there's no chance really of them overheating uh, with this on. Um, I also used it as a cover when I was breastfeeding. There was a couple of times when I was out and I don't know whether I had my regular nursing shawl or not but I use this and it was really good just to kind of tuck into my bra and cover the baby without them kind of feeling like they had a heavy material on top of them so that was good, really good for that. You can also pop these on the floor if, you, if they're playing or you're visiting a friend and um, so they're really really useful I love them. My next item is a breast pump I don't actually have it with me because it's already made its way up to the loft and I don't want to tell my husband to go and get it back out again because I keep telling him to put things up there and I don't want to start bringing them back down again. Basically it's a manual pump and with my oldest I struggled with breastfeeding and I didn't get any sort of breast pump prior to him being born thinking that I would do breastfeed and then if it worked then eventually I would get a breast pump. Not realising that it may, I may struggle with breastfeeding and I might need a breast pump in order to help that along. So this time I thought well, I'm going to buy a manual breast pump so that if I have any troubles with breastfeeding and need to express 
then I've got something to tag me over till I decide what I want to do. In the end, I did buy an electric breast pump for my sister, so I didn't need to buy one. I did use that for a little while, but eventually we switched completely over to formula milk. Um, but this manual breast pump that I had is called the Hacker, and it's really good. I highly, highly recommend it. It's basically one piece of equipment. There's no like levers, nothing that's going to get dirty because it's just one piece of silicon, and it just attaches to your breast. And once you've got it attached right, it does the job for you. So I was able to just kind of sit it there while either... I didn't do it while I was feeding my baby because I was struggling to get the position right and I wouldn't have been able to do both at the same time. But I can imagine once you are comfortable with breastfeeding that you could do both at the same time. But I was able to kind of hold my baby if he needed um, comforting and do that at the same time. So it was really good. I didn't have all this action highly recommend it i think it cost me about 15 pounds on amazon if i can find it i will link it down below for you absolutely fantastic if you're thinking of breastfeeding but you don't know how you're going to do with it um, actually no one knows how they're going to do with it even if you've breastfed before because the baby has seen how it works as well as you do um, i would suggest getting one of those if you don't want to spend money on an electric pump until after the baby's born and whether you decide what if that's for you this will tide you over for 15 pounds it is really really good and it was essential for us even though we didn't continue breastfeeding it allowed me the opportunity to make breastfeeding work as much as possible it allowed me to feed my baby breast milk for a little bit longer and then once i decided that i was going to keep expressing for a little bit longer i was able to then borrow an electric one for my sister but I could have bought one as, and get that delivered or gone to the shop and got one but I had the manual one there ready to use in the meantime um, so I'm definitely glad that I bought it. My next item is our crib which is in the bedroom which is right behind me. Um, I hopefully have a video or photo that I can link in for you so you can see that. Um, we got the next to me crib with our oldest boy Tommy we just had a motor basket it was given to us and we bought a mattress to go into it a new mattress to go inside there but our babies are both really big and um, they were bigger when they were born and they just kept growing and growing so he only lasted in it a few weeks and then we had to put him into his cot now our bedroom isn't big um, and it's, with all the furniture there isn't enough space to put a cot in there we can just about fit the crib in there um, but when he was born when my oldest was born we had a spare bedroom and we were all able to vacate our bedroom and go into the spare bedroom because we had a double bed at the time in there and very little furniture so we were able to put the cot in there with us and it was fine so I was able to keep the baby with me a little bit longer this time around we don't have that option. This is our spare bedroom right here. This is Tommy's bedroom. So Tommy now is in what was our spare bedroom and the nursery still is a nursery. So there's nowhere for us to put a cot once the baby gets too big for a Moses basket. So I needed something bigger. I needed something that would last a bit longer. And then we had the option of keeping the baby with us for as long as we felt right. Uh, both of my babies have been over the 90th percentile on the chart that, um, they monitor them on and I think he's at least the 91st percentile on his height but he's a chunkier baby than Tommy was. Tommy was really slender whereas Fraser is a little bit chunkier. Um, not that that makes a huge amount of difference but it would do with, in a Moses basket. Uh, I went for the next to me because although it's slightly shorter than some of the longer cribs it is wider and obviously they've got their arms they want to spread out and Fraser does sleep with his arms kind of to the side of him both sides of him but the crib has been really good um, the side comes down so you can see straight into our bed I'm able to lift him out kind of lift him out it's quite heavy so, but as a newborn I was able to lift him out next to me and feed him um, and I'm able to soothe him in the night if he does wake up uh, it's just been fantastic. It is quite a lot of money to spend compared to a Moses basket, but in my eyes, definitely has been worth it. I wish I'd had it with my oldest, um, but you just think that you can make do with what you've got or with a Moses basket and you think it'd be fine. Uh, and Moses baskets are fine for a lot of babies, um, but I do find even the ones that are sm like normal size or smaller do go out of the Moses baskets really quick. So it's obviously it has to work for you and your circumstances and our bedroom cannot take a cot 
Um, and so in order to me, allow me to keep him with us as long as we feel right, um, this has been absolutely essential and I'm really grateful that we got it and then we had the money to get it. The next item is a rocker chair. I wanted somewhere for Fraser to sleep during the day. With my eldest, we used his um, carry cot from his push chair and I didn't really want him on the floor um, because we've got a toddler as well. So I bought a rocker that came from Mother Care. Again, I hopefully have some clips I can put in for you so you can see that. Um, this came from Mother Care and it lays flat, completely flat for them if they're newborn or having a sleep and it can come up at two stages actually. There's um, The back kind of comes up and then there is another stage where it can come up either fur even further and um, for them to sit up. Now Fraser is too big to lay down in, in it now, it's meant to last till the six months, um, it's not going to for him um, but he sits in it now which is really good um, and it's got, it doesn't rock um, automatically you have to manually rock it but there is a little uh, vibrator on the side and if, I think it plays music although we've never played the music and we don't really use the vibrator either because it keeps running out of battery it guzzles up the battery so we have just haven't replaced it but it's fine he was coping fine without that but it has been really good for daytime naps he was able to sleep in there because um, it was completely flat and so I was happy in the fact that he had somewhere flat to sleep during the day um, and then when he got a bit stronger and he was able to sit up I was able to sit him up in there because he really enjoys sitting up he likes to see what's going on he doesn't want to be laid down if he's awake he wants to be seeing the world and what's going on so that's been really good that I've been able to sit him up and it, that he has a couple of options of where the, the back comes up so that you can see a little bit or further up um, so that has been really good really grateful that I've got that and it has worked and I've used it every single day since, well, particularly the first two or three months I use it every single day. We don't use it every day now, it just depends because it's only sitting in it now and sometimes I put in a minute, sometimes I don't, it depends what we're doing that day. Still on the sleeping theme, um, I have been using the sleeping bags, this is just one that I have, I'm not too sure where this one came from. Um, again, this is one that we use with our oldest. There are so many sleeping bags that you can get now and there are ones where, you, where they've got like poppers on the sleeve so their arms sit inside. So it's like a um, swaddle uh, without it being an actual swaddle because it's a sleeping bag. Um, we don't have those ones but they do look really good. Once um, Fraser kind of grew out of wanting to be swaddled all the time and he got a bit bigger, then we went to these. Um, these are great because you know they're going to stay warm, they're not going to kick off blankets, although we often put a blanket over top of it as well because winter babies, it is cold, um, but just like a thin blanket over their kind of torso and feet just to make sure that they are warm enough. Um, but I really like these and we will be using these for many months to come because it just means that they definitely stay warm and they've got a blanket on all the time because they can't kick it off. Uh, this one is really good because it, there are many that you can get that kind of zip from the bottom. This one doesn't, but I really like the fact that it zips open completely. Some of them don't fully open, so it's really easy to get them in and out of this one, which I, this particular one that I've got, but we've got a few that we enjoy using. Again, on the sleeping theme, we have an app that we've been using pretty much every single day. I'd say there hasn't been a day go by without us using it, and it's called the Sound Sleeper. It's this one here, if it's going to show up. It's this one here. So if I just click on it, um, this basically is white noise. We don't have any sort of white noise machine, although there are lots on the market, and I have been interested in possibly getting one, but so far this has worked. And so when you open the app, you've got options of what type of white noise to use. And we always use the room and you just click on it. It's got set for 30 minutes and it just has that sound. Um, I think if you pay for the app, you can set it for longer than 30 minutes, but we haven't done that and it's worked fine for us. But this really helps Fraser to settle down. Sometimes he's getting really agitated and he's really tired and he's rubbing his head backwards and forwards. I put that on and it completely settles him down. It works like a treat. Um, so I'd highly recommend something like that. If you haven't got any sort of white noise machine or toy, get the app, um, Sound Sleeper. I will try and link it below or link the details below 
um, it's free we haven't paid for it i think there is an option of paying for it if you want to but we haven't done that and it works fantastic for us the next item is a bath seat and we have the angel care bath seat this one here now fraser didn't like the seat to begin with but i don't think it was the seat he didn't like i think it was the water both of our boys had not liked the water in the first week or two of them being born and they just needed to kind of get used to it he absolutely loves the water now and i have stick him in this seat and his little legs are going backwards and forwards and he's splashing and he just loves it quite often do bath him on his own in it so it, the reason why i wanted to use this was that i could bath both boys at the same time but when he was very little i just kind of gave him a little bath quickly and then put tom got him out and then put tommy in and i found that easier to do and um, but it's so much easier to stick him in there obviously i'm with him all the time i'd never ever leave him in the bath in there because it would be so dangerous to do that but i'm not having to lean over the bath and hold a baby i can sit on we've got a little step in the bathroom now sit on there sit him in this seat um, so his head's here and his legs are down here. Sit him in there and I'm able to just wash him. And this is supporting him instead of me having to support him. But obviously I'm with him all the time. Um, and there's obviously the water can get through um, because it's silicon and got little holes. But I like this one because it's not material. There's a, there's a lot that are kind of like spongy. And I would just kind of assume that they would get a bit manky. So this one I like a lot better. And it just hangs on the back of our bathroom door and then we get it out when we need it. Now that Fraser's a little bit older, I do bath the boys together and both boys love it and I end up getting drenched. You'd think it'd be Tommy that would drench me, the two year old, but actually Fraser drenches me with his little legs going everywhere. Um, but Tommy thinks that's absolutely hilarious. And then Fraser thinks it's hilarious because Tommy thinks it's hilarious. Um, so it's really cute to watch. Um, so it's, it's working out really well for us now that he's a little bit older and I feel better about him being in the bath at the same time with Tommy. Um, Tommy is really good with Fraser, but when they're very, very little, they're so fragile, and I just find it easier just to bath him on my on his own and then bring Tommy in. But now he's older, they have a little bath together, um, which is really cute. And my last item, which has been an absolute godsend with having two children, is a baby carrier. Um, I didn't use a baby carrier very much with Tommy. Fraser actually is a lot more demanding than Tommy was. He likes to be held a lot more than Tommy did. Um, he is happy being held. It doesn't, he doesn't have to be kind of cradled. He just wants to be held. He just wants to be on my knee. He will go down, but then so he'll do it for so long and then he's had enough and he wants to be held. Um, so baby carrying has been really helpful it's been it's allowed me to still do things with tommy it's allowed me to still prepare dinner or do a few house bits of housework and um, when he's wanted to be held um the carry that i have i'm not putting it out there as one that i recommend necessarily it's one that i've borrowed i don't think it's the best for newborns although newborns can go into it from about seven pounds but i'm not going to say that it's one necessary that i recommend i'm not saying i don't recommend it I'm a bit indifferent to it. I don't know very much about carriers at all. Um, I was a complete no novice um, when Tommy was born, and still a complete no no and still a complete novice now. And I wish I'd gone to a sling library when Fraser was a newborn just to get their advice, but I didn't. Um, the one I've been using is uh, it's going to be hard to show you. Um, it's the Baby Bjorn, and it's all back to front and twisted. So it's this one here. Um, I don't know if I've got any clips. Oh, I think I might have some clips of me cleaning in it. So if I have, I'll try and put one in for you. Um, it has worked out well for us. I would say now he doesn't really like going in that one. There's something that's not working for him and it's not really working for me. I have been to a sing library this week um, because we weren't getting on with the baby Bjorn. And I'm now using um, this Lily Baby. This is only in rental, so I've got it for the next four weeks. So far, we enjoy it. Um, I suffer with a bad back. I get sore shoulders and I get sciatica in my lower back. So I need something really supportive. And I do have big babies. Fraser is in six to nine month clothing. And even that's starting to look a little bit small on him. So I'm going to be moving into the next age group soon enough. And he's only four months. So he's a really big baby. He's heavy. 
and I'd like to carry on baby carrying because it is really helpful when you've got a two-year-old, a toddler, as well as a baby to be able to kind of strap them on and have your hands free and you're not tied to a push chair and you're not carrying the baby. It's just so helpful. So, so far we are enjoying this, but I haven't used this um, until this week. So I can't tell you what it's like with a newborn, but it, it does start from newborn um, and it goes up to 45 pounds. But I highly recommend baby wearing, um, but get yourself to a sling library if you're interested in trying out some carriers. I don't know very much about them, so I can't really advise, um, but they will. The one that I went to, I think had about 600 types of slings and baby carriers. Um, so definitely go and check out a local um, sling library. This has only cost me 10 pounds for four weeks. So money is tight for us, but we can find 10 pounds to try this out so that we don't have to go buy and then regret because there are so many um, carriers out there. It's hard to know which one is right for you. And there are kind of cheaper versions of carriers and it's just finding the kind of right option. This one looked really similar to some of the others that she had, but she picked this one out for me because it was a bit more structured and it will hopefully give me the support that I need. It also has this extra bit in the back that I can take out, but this is like a support for your back. And I didn't have it in when I was there, but I put it in for the park yesterday and it did, it felt good to have it there, to kind of just on my lower back, um, giving me a bit of support. So that was really good. So that's, there's, yeah, get yourself to a sling library if you're interested in trying any carriers out. So they are my essentials for what a baby might need. Obviously there are lots more things that a baby needs. I see posts on the internet that, where people say, what do you need for a baby? And people say, um, love and food. Actually, no, we do need a few more things than that. Um, obviously you can get by with very little, but they do need nappies. They do need to wear clothes. Uh, there are a few things, they need somewhere to sleep. There are a few things that they absolutely do need. Um, so obviously there are the essentials like nappies and clothing and food that they do need and depending on how you're feeding them will depend on what essentials that you need for the baby. But these are just kind of extra items that you might think you could do without, um, but we have really loved. So I hope this has been helpful. I'll hopefully have another one for you when he is six months or just after six months um, so that I can share with you what we've been enjoying for the for the next few months um, but if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and if you're new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button and i will see you in my next one bye guys